Well, thank you very much uh, for being here today. And, um, you know, I can't uh, thank you guys enough for your service to our country. Uh, Minnesota has a long, proud history of our citizens serving our state and our country. And especially Hastings has a very, um, very wonderful history and a lot of uh, current active members of the military too. So first and foremost, I, I wanna thank you for your service uh, and to my staff, to the staff of the department, the Congresswoman, um, the um, Hastings Veterans Home here, all of all the folks that helped put this together. Uh, Sue does a tremendous job here with the volunteers and the coordinating, so thank you for doing that. Um, I think the game plan here, if it's all right with folks, I wanted to do a recap of what we did uh, in the legislative session and then have uh, Representative Jurgens come up and talk a little bit about what he wants to talk about, but I think it's going to be more on bonding because he serves on that committee. Then we have uh, Congresswoman Angie Craig um, here to make comments and also the Commissioner of Veterans Affairs. And so um, I'm going to just get started. Uh, this, I'm a member of the Senate Veterans and Military Affairs Committee and every day I look for opportunities to give back uh, to our veterans and our active military. Uh, even, you know, the sacrifices are huge and even if we can give a small portion of that back, uh, we need to continue to work on that. This session, uh, we fought hard to ensure that the budget request for military affairs and veterans affairs departments were fully funded. And in the end, we passed a budget bill that, that did that. Uh, we do know our governor of the great state of Minnesota um, is a retired National Guard, and so um, this has always been a priority for him. Uh, Veterans and Military Affairs budget proposal included a $2 million in additional funding uh, for the enlistment incentives, 500000 for the core program, and additional 775000 for veteran cemeteries, um, and also 353000 each year for grants for congressionally chartered veteran service organizations, um, so that's the American Legion, VFW, Order of Purple Heart, um, those wonderful organizations that do a lot uh, for our community. Um, the, also the Armed uh, Forces, Forces Services Center at the Minneapolis Airport received $100,000 for uh, some renovations there. Um, the policy bill, uh, so there's finance and policy obviously in both of these bills, um, would make it easier for veterans to receive the homestead exemption credit uh, we also had um, Prisoner of War and Missing in Action Recognition Day, Veteran Suicide Awareness Day, American Allies Day, and among Special Guerrilla Units Remembrance Day. And so those were all items uh, that were passed this year. Uh, one other bill that I was particularly proud of is the Homestead Valuation Tax Exclusion allows for all or portion of the market value of the property owned by a veteran and serving as a veteran's homestead to be excluded from determining the, the property uh, taxable market value. Uh, and what we did is we removed uh, an eight year limit on surviving spouses and continued so that they can continue to receive that homestead uh, credit exclusion uh, in, indefinitely as, and, or until the property is sold or transferred or remarried. Um, there may be some tweaks uh, to that next year. We may. Um, continue to revisit that. So to, to make it uh, maybe a one-time uh, transfer as you downsize in a, in a house. So I think that would be nice. Uh, we also did authorize World War I memorial plaque to be uh, at the Capitol grounds, which is uh, fantastic. A couple disappointments, if you will. Uh, I'm a big proponent of restorative justice. And in, especially in Washington County, uh, where I was a county commissioner, I also want to recognize Dakota County Commissioner Mike Slavic, uh, who is here. Uh, in 2008, um, Minnesota allowed for veterans courts or specialty courts to be established, and I know that Washington County has one. And, and as they, um, as crimes uh, are directly related to military service. Um, or maybe trauma from, from that, uh, we're able to divert them so that they receive treatment instead of criminal charges. And that is super important. And we need to fund that and expand that. Um, we, uh, we also, um, the, the bill that is known as Veterans Restorative Justice Act, which creates the two paths for veterans charged with crimes depending on the seriousness of their offense, um, 
that can be diverted uh, did not pass, and I'm disappointed about that, and hopefully we'll be able to revisit that next year. Uh, the other one that it's not 100% towards veterans, but it's char charitable gambling reform. Um, the amount of taxes that, uh, say, the um, VFW Legion that they get received through their um, uh, organizations, they pay an exorbitant amount of taxes on, and that does not then that's less money that gets to go back into the community and, and, and serve uh, the veterans. And so we it passed the Senate, it was in the Senate bill, uh, tax bill, but it did not make it through conference. So I'm uh, going to continue to um, work on that. One other item that uh, I'm announcing today that I'm going to be introducing for next year is, is increasing the per diem rate uh, for domiciliaries. Right now it's at $90 a day. It's been that way since 1997. So I intend on... Um, introducing a bill that will gradually increase that, give it a couple bumps, and then tie it to the rate of inflation. And so I'm going to continue to work on those issues next year. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to my colleague, Representative Tony Jurgens. Thank you, Senator Bigham. And, and I also want to thank Senator Bigham. This was uh, I was on vacation a couple weeks ago and, and uh, she sent me a text and said I think this would be a great idea to hold this event at the Hastings Veterans Home. Uh, so without her we wouldn't be here today. I want to thank Senator for, for doing that. Uh, Senator Bigham covered a few of the, of the issues that I wanted to talk about too, the, the successes from this past session. Uh, specifically the, the removal of the eight-year limit on the uh, homestead credit. So uh, I'm glad that's long overdue. I'm glad to see that that, that was removed and looking forward to taking care of other uh, important veterans issues in the future. Uh, also not requiring uh, the annual renewal of the, the information that, that, uh, that you all had to go through. That's part of that uh, same homestead credit. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the bonding bill that from two years ago and how that affects you. You might recall that there were three new veterans homes in the state of Minnesota that were funded. And at that time and, and still today, I say that is extremely important. Those three veterans homes, uh, when they are up and running, they're going to serve a need in three different parts of the state. Uh, Bemidji and Montevideo and then in southeastern Minnesota, those are very much needed and those I'm sure will be filled um, before you know it. But the caution that I had at that time and I want to talk about again now is not to forget about the veterans homes that we have already and the need, the upkeep, the maintenance that are needed here um, as well. And with three new veterans homes, um, those are going to have maintenance on an annual basis and in 20 years they might need HVAC, they might need roofs, they might need windows and that's an investment in the state and we have to realize that it's not just building that veterans home but it's also let's plan for the future and let's recognize the fact that we're going to need, need to take care of those and let's also take care of what we have right here in Hastings as well. Uh, there was a, in the bonding bill there was a, a maintenance provision that is being used today and the Hastings veterans home is being uh, taken care of um, at least to the extent that we can with that money and we have to continue to do that too. Let's not just build new, that's great, it's needed, we'll do that, but we also need to take care of what we have. Uh, a couple of other issues that are important to me and I want to recognize the uh, Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. Uh, one of the things that, that I learned of and I actually went out and, and met with some folks at the Minneapolis Veterans Home last year and that has to do with veterans dental care and how the state of Minnesota, the Minnesota Veterans Association is on the forefront of that or, or with uh, not just with veterans, but also with all seniors. You know, when you're, when you're uh, providing dental care, dental hygiene care to a veteran who may be partially disabled, uh, might be in the later stages of life where they have different uh, mental issues or, or memory issues, um, that present certain challenges with their dental care. What might take you and I 45 minutes to go in to have a, a you know, semi-annual cleaning might take several hours. And that's not just for veterans, but it's all seniors. And the veterans' uh, dental care is on the forefront of that, and they're actually 
coming up with ways or recognizing how to do that that's going to benefit seniors all over the state of Minnesota. So I want to recognize them for that as well. The last thing that I want to say today is uh, the, the uh, well, first of all, let me ask, any Naval veterans here? We have a few. So a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, up at the Capitol and the uh, uh, Deputy Undersecretary of the Navy, Jody Green, was here. Uh, she's actually a Northfield veteran or Northfield um, uh, constituent or born and raised in Northfield. Uh, she is uh, the Deputy Undersecretary of the U.S. Navy now. She was on her way up to Duluth for Navy Week. We had the opportunity to visit with her for a while and we talked about LMS uh, uh, 21, the, the USS Minneapolis-St. Paul was recently, uh, let me get this right, it was christened in Wisconsin a few weeks ago and we're hoping that uh, next year that that ship will come through from the Hudson Bay all the way to Duluth and we'll have an event uh, in, uh, in Duluth uh, to, what's the next, if the christening, the commissioning, that's the word I was looking for, thank you commissioner, for the commissioning in Lake Superior and Duluth. Uh, I hope that that comes to fruition, uh, fruition, I've heard that it is, I'm looking forward to that, I'm glad that it's going to be in Duluth so that more of us can come up and can go up to Duluth and be a part of that. So keep an eye on that, I'm sure you'll, you'll see plenty of, of uh, news on that as that event gets closer. Um, I want to thank you all for coming this morning. Uh, we in initially intended to have this uh, a little bit later, but due to schedule conflicts, we had to move it up to 8 o'clock. Uh, so I see that there are great big cups of coffee for those of you that need it. But thank you very much for coming today, and I look forward to hearing the rest of the discussion. And I also want to thank Congresswoman Angie Craig for coming today, and at this time I would like to welcome Congresswoman. Well, I need my big cup of coffee with me up here at the podium. So, listen, thank you. I feel like I'm at church on Sunday. Uh, nobody wants to sit anywhere near the preacher. So, uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for being here. Thanks for being here so early uh, in the morning. It, it is an honor to represent the 2nd Congressional District of Minnesota. I'm uh, your member of Congress. Uh, and the word representative is important here because the entire purpose of my congressional office here in the second congressional district is to make sure that you have somewhere if you experience any issues with your veterans benefits with your social security disability benefits anything like that my office can help navigate the federal government now i'm an accidental politician uh, I never thought I would run for Congress. I spent most of uh, my career in the private sector, um, but I wanted to come here this morning. I kind of crashed this party uh, for the, from the, uh, the invitation of the Senator just to tell you how grateful I am for your service and how grateful this nation is for your service to us. Thank you. See. I, I come from a family, you may notice uh, I have a little bit of a, a twang uh, in my voice, and people ask me all the time, where are you from? And I say, Egan, it's south of the cities. We all talk like this down here. And, uh, but I, I know what it's like to grow up in a family of service. My grandfather was uh, served in the Navy during World War II. I've got uh, two uncles, and uh, my uh, dad barely missed Vietnam. And so two of my uncles served uh, in the Vietnam War. They both came home, thankfully. Um, however, one of my uncles was dead before he was 50 years old, uh, a casualty of exposure to Agent Orange. So uh, I know what it's like to have a 93-year-old grandmother, be lucky enough to have one now. Um, who tells me the story of having two of her four sons off in Vietnam and what that was like for her every single day. And so one of my objectives in the Congress is to make sure that we don't forget about the families uh, of the servicemen and women today who are doing um, you know, their level best to serve this nation too by just keeping the home front burning while folks are away serving. Um, my personal experience led me when I was at St. Jude Medical, some of you know I was there for about 12 years, um, to start a program um, called MedTech Vets. 
And so this program that we ran has now been extended to all of medical technology companies so that uh, we can give returning veterans, um, particularly at the time from Iraq and Afghanistan because we had so many starting to come back, um, a job in the manufacturing sector, a good paying job that would allow them to uh, move forward in the private sector and I'm happy to say that that program has been uh, extended and expanded. I'm also pleased to say that uh, two weeks ago I voted for an appropriations bill in the U.S. House that provided an additional 20 billion dollars uh, in funding to the VA. So we need to make sure that we continue to fund the VA appropriately, that there's appropriate accountability oversight and that we are taking good care of you um, here back home. The other uh, couple of bills I wanted to mention this morning is H.R. 299, and that's the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act of 2019. I am a proud, proud co-sponsor of uh, that bill, and obviously the benefits have finally become available for uh, veterans as that bill has been signed into law. I mean, you know, Washington didn't get much done, uh, but we sure got that done, uh, and it's really, really critical and important. Now, the last thing I'm going to say um, is, is just Washington is a tough place to be right now. This country seems to be more divided um, than many of us have seen it in our lifetimes. But I, as a member of Congress in particular, get up every single day representing this district and say, how can we work together? What is it that we agree on? What can we do to move this country forward? And with respect to taking care of our veterans, that's something we can agree on. Uh, with respect to farmers and family farmers in this congressional district, I serve on the Ag Committee. That's something that we can agree on. I serve on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, and I actually serve on the Water Resources Committee. So uh, have authority over the Army Corps of Engineers uh, and this beautiful river town that uh, you know, we're sitting in here now. So I still believe that um, this country uh, will come together, that we will find a way uh, to continue to find that common ground and you know, the democracy that all of you have fought for, have been involved in our military for, um, will be just fine and will be finding that common ground for years to come. So I, I for one, am committed to that. And again, I thank you so much for your incredible service to our country. And if you ever have a personal need, uh, please reach out to my district office because we'd be happy to help you. And again, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Congresswoman. We appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here and all you do for us uh, in Washington. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Commissioner Herkey of Veterans Affairs Department. Well, it's great to be back here in Hastings. I was a resident here for 12, uh, 12 years and I got a chance to be in the parade yesterday. And some people, and it was a great day in the parade too, because I got to drive a electric, uh, small electric vehicle through the entire parade, which was a good, so I didn't have to do the running back and forth. But uh, someone asked me, when was the last time you were in the parade? And I said, well, the last time I was in the parade was the day I returned from Iraq. And I actually got on the Boy Scouts float and got a chance to, to wave and, and uh, throw some candy and so forth. So for me, it was uh, great coming home again after, uh, after several years uh, away here from Hastings. Um, I want to say thank you to the legislative group here. They've all done wonderful work for veterans. I can tell you uh, they did their hard work, especially with the veterans' homes uh, a couple years ago. And what I'm tell telling you is that I'm doing, I and our staff are doing our job now to make sure we get the federal funding in place that's required. We have some timelines. We met the first one. The second one here is on the 1st of August. We have the design complete for all three homes. We are locked and loaded and ready to go uh, for, uh, for receiving that money. So if we do receive that money, that's going to be a quick transition into construction and moving forward. Um, if uh, Governor Waltz was here today, I don't, many of you may not know, but uh, Governor Waltz was actually my first sergeant when I was in St. James, Minnesota in the artillery battery. 
and we had an opportunity, of course, to, to spend many years together there, uh, both at the battery level and at the battalion level. But I can tell you he's very dedicated, and, and our focus really has been a lot on veterans' homelessness. We're down to 216 veterans right now that are homeless. Our focus uh, going forward is to take that to zero. We were lucky enough to be down in southeast Minnesota in Mankato uh, last week, and we uh, were able to declare the southeast continuum of care as functional zero for homelessness, which is a great accomplishment. Uh, we've got five of the continuums down, we got five to go, and 216 veterans. So I'll continue to give you updates on that. My intent is that's one of the first things I want to take care of. We've had, that's, this has been going on way too long. We need to take these veterans and put, find a safe place for them to live and be a functional part of society going forward. Um, not a lot of other comments. I do want to tell you that I've been here. I met with the staff. I've also come back. You may have saw me in my coveralls. I went through the entire building, and you can ask the staff here. They, uh, I looked under mics in the back here. I looked everywhere. I asked questions. I um, it, just trying to set an idea of where this facility is, and what the needs and and so far are going forward. I've listened to the the staff here, and my next focus is really to look at surveys from the individual veterans and their families, and also meet with veterans groups going forward. So that's. Uh, my next step, and we'll be putting together a strategic plan that will be nested in the state strategic plan uh, for our agency, and Hastings will be one of the key elements of that plan to make sure we have a facility here that serves um, our veterans here into the future. So just wanted you to know I've been here, been here quite a few times, and uh, I'll be back again to meet with uh, more people to, to uh, be able to figure out wh what we need to do here long term. But I appreciate uh, you guys coming out today and getting up and, and being here and participating in this uh, little uh, roundtable. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dean. Um, with that, if there are any uh, particular questions, uh, if, if you could speak loudly and then um, I can repeat the question and whoever wants to answer it can. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep, absolutely. We're going to keep uh, that discussion going and that fight going. Um, I, I, I mean, the Senate passed it, uh, and it was in the Senate uh, tax bill. It just didn't make it through the conference committee, but it definitely is on uh, all the organizations do a fantastic job when they come to lobby us of making sure that that is mentioned and is a focus, and it is something we have to do. It, I, I agree. I mean, it that money could be used to put back into our communities and and into the infrastructure of the facilities that host the events that are a gathering a special gathering place for our veterans and their families and so uh, we really do need to change that and we'll keep doing that uh, Tommy Johnson BFW state legislative officer and I'd like to thank you on behalf of the BFW for addressing 
legislative priority list. Uh, the Veterans Restorative Justice Act that got filed out in the Senate. Um, the downsizing on uh, the Widow's Homestead and uh, the tax relief for our charitable gambling uh, and gaming. And uh, thank you very much for supporting those. Mm -hmm. They're all very important policies. And we're going to keep fighting for the restorative justice. Uh, again, we don't uh, we don't need uh, criminal records as a result of um, issues that develop during uh, service to our country. So we need to help make people whole, treat the whole soldier, sailor, marine. Uh, so, any I don't know if anybody else has anything to say. On this. I don't. You know, the Senate typically dominates, and I have two House members here, so I'm trying to be caucus. Well, I guess to, to answer your question about the uh, charitable gam gambling taxes, uh, the, the ugly truth is is because the state of Minnesota is addicted to your money. That's why. They're viewing the income, the taxes from the, uh, from the charitable giving as a great income source for them rather than how it should be used is going back to the charitable organizations for the good that you can do in your community. So I stand with Senator Bigham on that and I hope that that is something that we can accomplish this year. Excuse me. Oftentimes, the way the bonding bill works is um, we. In, in fact, I did have a, a bonding uh, bill specific to the Hastings Veterans Home in 2017. Uh, but what happens with many of these, the way these projects are funded, it's not individual projects. Um, there will be some dollar amount. Might be 10 million dollars. Might be you know 12 million dollars that goes towards uh, existing veterans homes maintenance. <laughs> And then it's up to the department to dole that out and to prioritize and to, to decide which projects actually need um, those fundings, the, the, the funding the most. And uh, the way that's been funded in the past um, is helpful, but it's never, has never, I don't think, been adequate. Um, and so I, again, applaud the, the department for the way that they prioritize and take care of the issues that come up. You know, even, you know, the commissioner said he was in his coveralls and he was looking under the, uh, um, you know, looking at all of, of the, the needs of this building. Uh, I will say as a, as a member of the Capital Investment Committee, we tour the state of Minnesota looking at bonding projects. We have uh, five trips scheduled later this summer and early fall uh, to do just that. We'll, uh, we'll take two and three days at a time to go to northwest Minnesota, northeast Minnesota, southwest, southeast, and in the metro area. And generally, uh, when you get a tour of a building, whether it's a school or a veteran's home or an armory, um, they always want to show you the best of what they have to offer. They want to try to hide the, the ugly parts of it. But when you're on the Capital Investment Committee and they're actually wanting money to help fix the problems, they show you the ugly stuff too. So um, we get to see how they might have a $20 Walmart fan that is keeping a, a circuit board 
cool, um, which is a fire hazard. And, and uh, so those are the types of things that we get to see on, on the bonding tour. I'm looking forward to that uh, and, uh, and continuing to work with, uh, uh, with Ben and with Simone and, and Commissioner Hughes and, and at, at making sure that um, your voices are heard and your needs here at the Hastings Veterans Home are heard as well as we work forward on the, the, the maintenance provisions uh, for the existing veterans' homes. Any other questions? Hi, I'm Bob Conrad, the uh, state uh, legislative director for military and for part. I'm also the legislation for the St. Paul chapter to the state of American veterans. First of all, Senator, I want to thank you for all your work for veterans and uh, being a past uh, county commissioner and also I hope that you are a good liaison between Washington County and the uh, legislature on behalf of the Veterans Rest Camp uh, at, uh, in Scandia at Big Green. We got a couple of people here that are on the board of the camp. Raise your hand here, please. Nice. I'm going up there next Saturday with uh, my yeah, father. Yeah, we're going to Yep, we're going to be good. at the picnic. We're, we're glad to be there and uh, hope that uh, you uh, help us stand out a little thing. I think it's a good job of, uh, with that camp of uh, bringing it up to uh, high standards uh, so it's a good place for veterans to go to. However, there's still some uh, improvements needed in the Lynn area, some uh, ADA things, and we may need some help on that. We've also, uh, I think, a good partnership with Washington County as far as uh, playing frontage and park system and uh, playing our separate roles there. Um, one last thing, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Representative Frank for back in February when we were out there at the DAV and you came to our early morning breakfast. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, if, if folks have not been out to the vets camp, it is amazing. You know, I'm the daughter of a sailor and granddaughter of a soldier, and my dad has not actually been out there. So Saturday will be his first time out there, but he loves to fish, loves to talk. Yes, he does. So, so uh, he'll, uh, he's going to have a good time out there at the picnic. So yeah, I'm afraid when we put the fishing and the talking together, what could happen with your father? Drinking. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Probably. 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 <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, my name is Sheldon Sink, and I'm president of the board of directors for the Veterans Rest Camp. And I just wanted to uh, recognize the fact that the state of Minnesota has uh, given us some grant money in the past. Um, and as Bob said, we do have an awful lot of uh, issues out there that are, are kind of pressing. Uh, one thing that I, I, I can say about the camp is that uh, you know, everything that we have done out there has been by the gracious uh, giving of uh, not only the indiv individuals that uh, partake in, in our day-to-day uh, -day contributions is astounding, but um, so many of the American Legion Post, the Atlantic Post, DAV, <coughs> have given us uh, enough of a boost to get us to the point where now uh, we're almost at the end of what we are able to do with, with what we've got. One thing that I can say that uh, should, should be a relief uh, for the government agencies is that once you fund us, we don't come back and ask for maintenance. And so if, if in fact you are able to uh, allow X number of dollars for a particular project, uh, you can consider it done, we will manage it properly. Um, the issues that we've had in the past is obviously uh, space. And uh, even though we do our best to try and rotation for our uh, visitors. Uh, we do have some room for expansion, but uh, like I said, it's, it's going to take uh, it's going to take a lot of foresight and planning in that regard. So, thank you very much for your support. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. 
formula for what we can keep a month and what is paid in for our maintenance, how does that start? Because I understand it does not start in the legislative halls, it starts outside our halls. So if you can explain that. Yep. So you're talking part. about the per diem uh, amount that I mentioned? For, I'm sorry. Residents charge per diem. Right. Yeah, so the. the, the well, we can't write off on income tax. Yeah. So um, I may need to phone a friend. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That's all right. um, the, bill, the bill that I'm <laughs> intending to do, as it's $90 a day, as, as I understand it. And uh, it has been increased since 1997. And I think we are, our friend is. Expert comes out of this. So what you're referring to are the fees that, monies that you get to keep after you pay your maintenance fees. Yeah. Correct. So Senator Bingham is going to be working on that uh, because what that is, that's in Rule 9050, which is the rule that governs the five veterans' homes and hopefully soon eight veterans' homes in the state. So that would have to be, that formula would have to be looked at. And we'd have to say, you know, weigh the pros and cons of, uh, of what those uh, increases might be. So that is currently being looked at. So we'll probably get some input from everybody, you know, uh, in that as well. The process itself, well, I'm, I'm not an elected official, but I believe that rules, uh, you know, we can propose rule changes because we did do a, a 90-50 uh, rules review. Currently, 90-50 is at the revisor's office, which is we've done those reviews and we sent it back where it has comments and those sort of things. And in addition to that, we can also make changes uh, other than just a, a, an all-out review, which is what we did. I, I believe if you go to the, um, if you just go to Google the revisor's office, because I know when a person came to my office and wished to see that, if you Google the revisor's office, you'll see the state of Minnesota with the capital and everything up front, and it'll give you how to contact them. So, so the other thing is, is there'd be a general appropriation, or in, in, in this case, we would increase it, because I would never just uh, uh, increase the rate without money to back it up, because then that means it would come out of current appropriation, which really starts uh, getting Doug really sweaty and shaky, <laughs> because that means he's got to find that money in current. So how we, would, how we would do it is we would increase the appropriation to the department, tell them that this is what we wanted for, and then through the rulemaking process, uh, they would tweak it and apply it. I had a question with that. This was proposed over three years ago by Dan yep. Condon, and he passed away, and was sort of shoved under the table. I was under the impression that it passed the first part of uh, whatever procedure it has to go through, and all of a sudden we heard nothing about it. Yeah. So, um, not my immediate predecessor, but my predecessor before that, State Senator KBC, the yeah. former State Senator KBC, had championed this. Um, it got dropped in conference committee uh, at the uh, end of session a few years ago. So you're right, it, it didn't make it, it did not make it through, it, it got dropped out of the conference committee um, uh, report that was the final, was finally passed. Why was that? Uh, I don't know that we know and I haven't, I haven't talked to her about why it was dropped to find mm -hmm. out the, the exact reason. No, Dan Cummins died, and now evidently this way they had the information here. And we were never notified that the resident council wasn't notified. Nobody was notified what was going on until one day we just sort of said, hey, whatever happened to that? Uh, well, when I introduce it, I will make sure to communicate with Mike uh, to give status updates, or to then I'll give status updates as to the uh, process of the bill when it gets reintroduced in February. Well, is that something we have to start all over again? Yes. I have to introduce a brand new bill, yes. Do you have to do it because it wasn't picked up on before? Correct. Yep. It wasn't picked up on before because nobody notified it? Uh, no, I think it was just dropped uh, throughout the process. 
to the legislative process, just kind of like the Restorative Justice Act. I mean, some things just don't make it across the finish line, unfortunately, and I believe that this was, was one of the cases. Also, um, it is a it is a increase in money, so we have to find that that money. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to start with hearings um, and and all of that. Yep. Aside from the money, why did things get dropped? Lack of agreement, or um, I think that's the main part is just lack of agreement. Whether it's between the House and the Senate, between Democrats and Republicans, between the legislature and administration, it can happen for numerous different reasons. So they didn't agree upon it, so they just dropped the thing? I don't know. I wasn't in the legislature at that time as to why it was dropped. But all I know is we're going to pick it up and we're going to try and get it across the finish line for folks. I was a commissioner. I was a county commissioner at the time when that was going through. I think it's something that should actually be taken, taken pretty seriously. They haven't had a raise. Absolutely. They haven't been raising over 30 years. Absolutely. And this is driving my attention. No, that's that's, that's, that's awful. Awesome. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's the year I graduated high school. I'm 40 now, so I mean, it's it's, uh, <laughs> it's a while ago. A lot of things, a lot of things went up in cost of living since then, so ninety dollars doesn't buy it. No, no. When you think of the cost of uh, you know uh, toiletries and and clothing and everything like that, it goes up. Absolutely, sir. It should be increased. I just thought it was something that should have went through. I thought it was something that should have also been notified. Evidently, this place knew about it, none of us were told about it, no matter whether it was dropped or not. Can I take it? Um, well, I'm sorry if I didn't introduce myself. My name is Douglas Hughes, and I'm the deputy commissioner, so I'm Mike's boss. I can tell you that um, since coming on um, and hiring Mike, we're very happy to have Mike on board. I believe Mike has been very upfront and has had uh, meetings with all of the residents, and he will continue to do that. So any kind of changes like that that come around, Mike, who's the administrator here, Mike Anderson, he'll be um, announcing or making sure that all residents know that. And I just want to add to that, once these bills get introduced in the House and in the Senate, um, we will get hearings on those in the veterans committees in the various houses. And all of you are welcome and invited. In fact, I, I hope that you do come up. Those are open to the public. Everyone is welcome to come and testify. And you can testify in front of the Senate uh, Veterans Committee and the House Veterans Committee and say exactly what you're saying today of how important that is to you and help get that point across to um, all of the members of those committees so that those bills do move forward. Well, see, the, other, the other problem is that a lot of us don't understand it as well. You know, what, what steps have to go, what way, or, you know, the person yeah. that, that was, that did produce it, he passed away, yeah. and he knew exactly what to do. A lot of us don't know exactly what steps to take. Yeah. Well, I think staying in contact and, and sending uh, Representative Jurgens and myself emails about supporting the, the provision uh, in this concept uh, is, is always helpful because then we can relay that message to our colleagues and the respective bodies. Uh, and also, um, you know, uh, Minneapolis would be impacted by this as well. Um, and so I think that um, there's ways that we can build coalitions and work together and across the aisle. And both in the House and the Senate to, to hopefully get this get this through. We, we sent a letter to you. Yeah. I don't know if you received it about what they proposed on doing, what they thought they were going to do, mm -hmm. or what they suggested to do. Yep. That's all the farther we got, so we don't put it any way further than that or whatever. Yeah, and, and that's why when I did my research on it, that's what I discovered <laughs> to my surprise, and I was very pleased about it, that it was Senator Seaven, because she's a close personal friend of mine. And so um, it, it'll be helpful when I get a chance to uh, talk with her and sit down about what happened. Um, then we can kind of get some background on it as well. And so, um, you know, we're gonna just take the bill that was um, introduced in 2015 and try and get it, uh, get it through this next upcoming year. Uh, 
Will you let us know that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, well, we're, we're, we're glad to do anything we got to do to just go through it. Like I said, a lot of us don't have the education or, or know what exactly what steps to take. We'll make sure. We'll make sure. Any other questions or comments? Awesome. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Congresswoman Representative Jurgens, thank all of you, and again, everybody that helped put this together. I appreciate you coming out on this early morning. So thank you very much.